t-shirt is you. Therefore, encouraged by this demonstration of a very real prospect of finally converging towards respectful code and peaceful consensus on the matter of BBI related, the prospect of reggae becoming Jerusalem. <laughs> emphasizing on, on emphasizing our long held and firm maintained position that we must avoid contentious, win-lose, divisive, or acrimonious referendum that hold the potential to breed hate, ethnic polarization, and conflict, cognizant that we are in the midst of the deadly pandemic that has ravaged our country, aware of a struggling economy which is on the verge of full-scale collapse aware of a struggling economy which is on the verge of a full-scale collapse, recognizing that we have not built the capacity to handle the huge risk that comes with the reopening of schools, as well as tremendous financial outlay required to enhance school facilities in this COVID phase. And after broad consultation, length engagement and robust deliberation with a wide spectrum of various stakeholders on the matter of the Constitutional Amendment Bill 2020. We appreciate the good proposal in the Amendment Bill and also acknowledge the positive efforts made in accommodating various concerns relating to outstanding issues as indicative of a progress towards consensus. With the progress we are making in building consensus on important constitutional, institutional, and administrative changes, we recommend that resources earmarked for BBI-related activities be redirected to COVID mitigation measures and supporting the recovery of micro and small enterprises. As a part of the consensus, we will be asking for a clear directions on issues of land and historical injustices. In furtherance of the above, we have three proposals to make. First, even with the post bomas gains and the improvement to the document, these outstanding issues require attention and we should build the necessary consensus to further enrich the Constitutional Amendment Bill 2020, especially because we have to acknowledge certain realities, including the fact that the people of Kenya have voiced strong concern about the prudence of a bloated government. Second, and imperatively, the BBI recommendation do not propose a constitutional replacement through the repeal and promulgation, but rather an amendment of various discrete provisions. This calls into question the appropriateness of framing the referendum as a single question plasticide when multiple issues must be considered. A multiple choice referendum is clearly more appropriate and has provided and has provided for 
in the current bill before parliament, the referendum bill by the COIC chair, Honorable Jeremiah Kioni, we feel we should take that route. Third, we must consider the circumstance which we find ourselves as a country. We are in the midst of a deadly pandemic that has ravaged our country, killing close to 1,500 Kenyans, including our frontline health workers, infecting nearly 100,000 Kenyans, and affecting the livelihood of millions of others, straining public health sector, and instigating an economic and a financial meltdown. The deepening financial quagmire has led to the destruction of livelihoods, of enterprises owned mainly by the hustlers, and consequential jo loss of jobs, and shrinks of revenue as evidenced by the last quarter posting of the Kenya Revenue Authority that ended in October. Additionally, we are hunted by the reality that we are yet to create confidence in our education system, ability to make schools safe enough for our children to resume school in January because of the myriad challenges facing the entire education and school system, which, are, which has remained largely unaddressed. Given the foregoing, it is legitimate to question the wisdom of spending 14 billion shillings a year before an election that will cost us another 42 billion going by the 2017 figures of the IEBC when a referendum could be conducted as the seventh ballot in a general election at a virtually no cost. We believe that it's prudent to hold the referendum and we are proposing that along having done all the others. Take it to the county assemblies, take to parliament, and the only remaining item is for the citizens to vote in. We can defer that, and we feel it's prudent to hold that referendum along with the general election in 2022, inshallah. Based on the above, our position is as follows. We care far too much for our country and fellow Kenyans to reduce this important exercise to a question of yes and no. Not just because it is premature and simplistic, but because there is real progress towards consensus that we need to resolve outstanding issues inclusively, exhaustively, and conclusively. Democracy provides us with infinite opportunity for deliberative consensus building. It is how great societies are built. It is how all Kenyans, in their great diversity, come together to make a beautiful future for themselves and for future generations. It is worth, and it is worth stating time without number that consensus is the right thing to do and the right way to go. We must therefore never tire or relent, or give up doing the right thing. Consensus entails both speaking and listening. We must listen to one another. The time is always right for consensus building. Therefore, we submit once more that it is never too late to do the right thing. Every time is consensus time. We have been asked what we mean by consensus. The consensus we seek and this country needs is in relation to content, process, and timing. In short, we must agree on the what, the how, and when. The consensus is to align the process with its founding objectives and bring it closer to the dreams and aspirations of Kenyans. By content, we mean we resolve outstanding issues through consensus 
including issues on judicial independence, bloated government and legislature, equity and equality in the presentation and affirmative action, among others. By process, we mean providing a multiple choice plebiscite to prevent the rejection of good ideas. By timing, we mean we should hold the referendum in 2022 together with the general election in order to save costs and direct available resources to mitigating the effects of COVID-19. Let all with one accord in Common Board United build this, our nation, together. Thank you. However, a number of issues raised by various stakeholders, including ourselves, remain outstanding and are yet to be conclusively and exhaustively addressed. The idea of accountability for all government organs is a strongly held tenant of democracy. The proposal on a judicial ombudsman speak to the issue of accountability of judicial officers. We, however, strongly believe that judicial independence matters and must never be undermined, even if only in perception. We submit, therefore, that there, will, there, there still remain room for the Ombudsman's appointment mechanism to be reviewed and agreed upon, and for the appointment of the Ombudsman by the Judicial Service Commission or the Chief Justice will be more consistent with the principles of judicial independence than appointment by the executive, which runs contrary to the principles of separation of powers. At BOMAS II, we oppose the establishment of 70 multi-member constituencies, seeking to move away from a culture of nominations and virtual constituencies. We are happy that the 70 constituencies have which have been, proposed, have been proposed to enhance representation. While we agree with the principle of equality and equity in representation, IEBC should vary the proposed constituencies by up to 20% so as to capture and accommodate the most expansive, arid, and largely marginalized areas, including Garissa, Nyeri, Wajia, Nyandarwa, Kitui, Kisi, and Migori. The proposals on affirmative action and equality in representation are important principles and there is a progressive attempt to address them. However, the outcome of the current proposal is that combined with nominations required to meet the two-third rule in accordance with Article 81, the size of parliament will increase from 416 seats to as high as 640. An increase of more than 200 MPs is untenable and a hugely unsustainable burden on the taxpayer. We bring back the to, back to the taxpayer. We propose that in addition to the 47 women elected to the Senate, we bring back the 47 women representatives elected to National Assembly. We note that this will allow for the elected women in the National Assembly to be nominated to the cabinet. We further propose all women representatives in parliament be directly elected by defined constituencies and should not be nominated or elected through party lists. In addition, we propose further discussion in parliament on the implementation of Article 81. We should commit every resource that is available towards tackling the corona pandemic, alleviating the serious uh, crisis in our, uh, in, in our economy, making sure that in January there are face masks, there are desks, there are facilities for our kids in school in January, and that there is a possibility for us to take this referendum together with the election in 2022. We want to offer a discussion we are not saying that it is cast in stone. We want to be persuaded why. Why it's not possible for us to do it in 2022. Our proposal is we can do it together with the election in 2022. So these are, when Kenyans go to vote in an election, they vote for MCA, Member of Parliament, Women Rep, Senator, Governor, President, six positions, right? 
in the six positions they vote for, there are 10 candidates for one position, 15 for another. They are literally voting from a group of almost 100 people. But they still manage to identify who they want. So if we make this referendum six or seven questions, independent questions, there is absolutely no difference with how Kenyans vote when they go for election. So it is absolutely reasonable for us to isolate five, six, seven items, itemize them, and Kenyans can vote independently like the way they do in every general election. Uh, there is a mechanism that can allow us to vote on the issues instead of the personalization of the referendum. We do not want the, re the referendum to be so-and-so versus so-and-so, because so-and-so is leading this place, is leading no, and so-and-so is leading yes. That, in my opinion, is backward. In fact, we are reducing the referendum to something else. We can make it much more progressive by providing a mechanism for Kenyans to vote on the issues. We have, as a team here, agreed that we will support the proposal by CIOC in Parliament to provide a mechanism in the referendum where Kenyans can vote on issues, not just a yes-no referendum. Maybe I will explain a bit. For example, there are Kenyans who have no issue with 35% going to the counties, and they want to vote yes. But there is a Kenyan who has a problem with the judiciary ombudsman. He wants to vote no. Why do we force a Kenyan to vote for something he does not want or to vote against something he wants? It is practically possible for us, for us to give an opportunity for Kenyans to vote yes for resources going to the county and to vote no for what he doesn't want or she doesn't want. And that is the opportunity we are saying should be made available to Kenyans. What will that do? The opportunity to allow Kenyans to vote on issues will completely remove these us versus them no yes referendum contest. Completely. It will remove it. There will be no need for us now to have teams campaigning yes this way, others campaigning no that way. We will then focus on issues. Which are the issues Kenyans will vote for, which are the issues Kenyans will not vote for, and the reasons why, and we can always take this forward. And let me say for the record that it was okay for us to vote no yes in the last referendum because we were enacting a new constitution. So the vote was between the current and the old. Now we are not voting for the whole constitution we are voting for articles of the Constitution. So it is perfectly in order for us to assemble articles that are together and vote for them uh, separately. And that's all we are, we are asking. Wa Kenya wengi wanalalamika kuhusu kiasi ya pesa ambayo itatumika katika kuendesha bunge mpya na tumetoa mapendekezo ya kwamba tunaweza kupunguza kutoka ile bunge BBI imependekeza tunaweza kuondoa wabunge wengine karibu hamsini sitini ili tuweze kupunguza size ya bunge na kupunguza pia karama ya wananchi katika mambo ya kuendesha mambo yao na mwisho tumesema vile vile hatutaki kwenda kwenye kura ya maoni Naitwa kura ya kura ya maamuzi sorry hatutaki kwenda kwenye kura ya maamuzi ya kusema tu ndio ama la bunge letu la Kenya tayari inatengeneza sheria 
ambayo itasimamia mambo ya referendum na hiyo e, sheria inapendekeza ya kwamba kuwe na kura katika articles ama e, vipengele tofauti hakuna haja ya kusema ndio ama la kama unapenda mambo ya 35% 35% kwenda kwa county unaweza kusema ndio kama kuna kipengele ingine hauamini unaweza kusema la na inawezekana tuwe na maswali kama tano, sita ama saba ili tusiende katika kukataa ili hali uko na mambo ambayo ungependa yapite kule ndani ama kukubali ili hali uko na mambo kule ndani ambayo ungependa isipitishwe kwa hivyo tumekubaliana ya kwamba sisi wabunge walio hapa wataunga mkono sheria iliyo bunge ya kamati inayosimamia mambo ya kutekelezwa kwa katiba ya kioni ili tuwe na nafasi ya e, referendum ambayo itakuwa na maswali kuzidi moja katika vipengele tofauti na vile vile tumesema kwa sababu ya hali ya uchumi iliyoko katika taifa letu la Kenya na kwa sababu ya matatizo ya ugonjwa wa corona wa Kenya wengi e, hawawezi kujimudu kulipa gharama ya matibabu tuko na matatizo watoto wetu Januari kurudi shuleni lazima masks zinunuliwe madawati zinunuliwe expansion ya facilities katika shule ishughulikiwe tulikuwa tunapendekeza hii million billion tano badala ya kutumika kwenye referendum tuweze kutumia hiyo pesa kushughulikia janga la corona na mambo ya uchumi ambayo iko chini kwa saa hizi na tuweze kupiga kura hii ya maamuzi pamoja na uchaguzi 2022 hiyo ndio mapendekezo yetu na tunawauliza ndugu zetu wengine tuweze kuongea tuweze kutafuta uiano na maelewano na makubaliano ili tuweze kutembea pamoja kama wa Kenya sisi tunaamini inawezekana hii um, uh, draft constitution proposal ambayo imewekwa inaweza kuwa republished tena ikichukua maoni inaweza kuchapishwa upya ili ikichukua maoni kama sisi wote tutakubaliana twende barabara hiyo asante sana